Okay, so I just want to quickly talk about vapor phase machine layout uh, with respect to the differences between batch systems, inline systems, and then the differences between inline machines vapor phase and inline machines uh, convection. So here we have some photography for this is a larger format batch system which would be front loaded but processed on the right side. Here we have a smaller batch system which would be front loaded, front unloaded. Uh, with the uh, process chamber directly beneath the load area. And here we have an inline system. Uh, direction of flow would be left to right, SMEMA compatible. Approximately the length of an eight zone convection machine, this would slot into an existing line uh, very, very comfortably and very, very easily. They all share the same basic fundamental layout. And that is, you have a tank. In uh, this case, it is a sealed tank with an external heating source. That heat source is clamped directly to the surface of the tank, so it has very, very good thermal communication. We have a small reservoir of medium in the bottom of that tank, and through the application of heat, create energy transfer into the liquid medium, and that's what generates our vapor, and it, has, uh, it is our vapor that in essence creates a thermal transmission mechanism to the circuit board, and the circuit board is moved in and out of the vapor area on a vertical elevator. At the top of the tank we have cooling coils. Those cooling coils both play a part in cooling the circuit and as a secondary mechanism for capturing any vapor that may otherwise find its way out of the tank, it can be encouraged to recondense and simply flow straight back into the tank. Um, overly simplified but this is the basis of a batch vapor phase system as well as an inline vapor phase system. And here you have a diagram of an inline vapor phase system. And it's important to note that the material flow through this system is not continuous. It is in essence a three stage batch process where you have a front end buffer, you have a process chamber, and then you have an offload buffer and cooling zone. So this would be this would be a plan view, this would be a front view. So your circuit boards accumulate in the buffer. The buffer on mass would transfer into the, um, into the process chamber. The process chamber has a vertical elevator which will bring the product down into the vapor arena, uh, processed, then rise back and exit out um, into a cooling zone and then on to secondary operations. Um, it is important to note that the buffer station is programmable, um, is automated, and can accumulate small boards in series, i.e. what we have here is a setup of three, or equally well could accumulate um, two boards, or one very, very large board, or uh, six, seven, eight, nine much, much smaller panels um, to maximize productivity. Um, and it is, in essence, the ability to process 1, 2, 3, 10, 12 circuits in this area, this surface chamber area, um, in the same time that affords vapor phase very, very high levels of, uh, of productivity. Every one of the systems exhibits the same thermal traits, irrespective of the number of boards loaded into the, uh, <clears throat> into the machine. <clears throat> that would be programmable ramp rates with a peak temperature convergence um, and zero delta T's at peak. Um, very, very low delta T's, uh, worst case scenario, if you've got some very, very complex circuitry, very, very high mass circuitry. And ultimately, the outcome of the efficiency of the fluid transfer mechanism is exhibited in the power consumption of the machines themselves being extraordinarily low uh, when compared to equivalent uh, convection systems by way of, of productivity and output. Finally, um, types of joint quality that you would experience with a vapor phase system, needless to say, are exceptional, um, very, very consistent, extremely repeatable um, with uh, phenomenal intermetallic quality um, and uh, joint integrity in general.
Testing, testing, testing.